Hey gang, Django here, Primal Punch here, coming at you with a quick little tutorial. And this is just, we're going to use our one inch punch training as a way to help us get more power, more force into close in punches for that close quarters unarmed combat. Okay, we want to be able to get our entire body moving into these punches. Okay, and a great way to do that, to help us use the strength we already have, is uh, utilizing our paper in a similar uh, way to how we were ripping paper to help us get a faster punch, that snap. Well, we're going to use our one inch, even though it's more than an inch, okay? It's fingertip length, all right? But we're going to use that to help us get our body moving and get more and more speed and force into those close end punches, okay? So even though this is fingertip length and say, you know, four inches, we want to actually have like, I don't know, eight to 12 inches of movement within that space of four inches. And like, what? Who are you, Stephen Hawking? How, how are you gonna manipulate physics? Well, it's simple. We're kinetic linking, okay? We're getting the rest of our body moving. So before this even moves, we have, we have this down here, okay? All getting this moving. So it's gonna look like that, all right? And the way we can use our paper is to listen for that snapping sound, okay? So if I go slow, thank you, Wynn. If I go slow, this is going to show up. Yeah, I got paper hanging up here. So if I go slow, all right, or if I just do that, but when I try to get things moving, then you get more, all right? And now, if you have yourself a heavy bag or one of these target bags, then you can use that as well. But the paper, you can hang that anywhere. I recommend if you're going to hang in a doorway to use masking tape so it doesn't pull your paint off. All right? But we're just going to practice that. Okay? I'm a shorty. I'm going to drop her down a little bit. I try to keep it up near head height for, for just general working out. But for this so we're gonna try to get get that body working together okay so so we can get a decent amount of power okay even with our our lead we can still get some movement okay and we're gonna have a a lever movement so I want you moving moving the other shoulder back with a mindfulness okay so we'll be able to still get, generate a decent amount of force, okay? Super simple, all right? We want to, you'll feel a little bit of a drive off the rear leg if we're shooting with our if we're firing off the, the strike with our our power hand, okay? The hand that's opposite our lead foot. Alright? So you're gonna you're gonna place pressure on the ball of your rear foot and the blade of your outside foot. That's how it's gonna feel when we turn through this, okay? And you're gonna turn your rear toe a little bit, like you're grinding out a cigarette, okay? And that's, that's all part of that, getting everything moving. So that's where it starts, the toe and the blade of the foot. And then this hip is going to move forward, okay? You see that movement? So my knee is kind of dropping my weight down and immediately followed by hip and waist movement, shoulder movement, and then it fires. So you want to get everything moving together, okay? So you can drive that through really, really well. And follow through. Follow through, okay? At least to a depth of like three inches or four inches, as long as that's not going to overextend your arm, okay? We never want our arm to be just perfectly straight like that because at this point, 
we're already fighting our own tendons and ligaments and you can cause yourself damage, you know, that tendonitis type thing. All right? Now, if we're firing with our jabbing hand, all right, or the hand that coincides with our lead foot, then the toe of that lead foot's going to turn, and we're going to try to bring our weight forward, okay? Um, drop the knee down a little bit, and feel the pivot come through here, and then the hip, which is already forward, will move forward incrementally more, all right? So it's not going to be as much, as much uh, force, but you can still get more into it. And this same movement will be used if we're firing those shovel hooks inside. If we're gonna, if we're gonna come down into ribs, we want to get those same movements, okay? Where we get our whole body already in motion before we fire, and then just stiffen up and deliver that that force, okay? So that's it. I just really wanted to share that with you. You can use your paper, okay, for, for practicing that and listening for a, a, a better and better sound, you know, as you go. You know, you'll get faster and faster, and you can even you can even test components of it, like how fast am I moving the the rest of my body. If you if you choose to not fire that fire your hand out, then you can see how fast you're moving just by not firing the shot and just firing everything else, okay? So, do you see what I mean? Where I'm keeping this static, I'm going to pin that to my, my side right there. And then, just fire that. You can get the uh, get a good idea of how, how well you're getting your body moving and how much space you're actually or how much distance you're actually traveling alright you see here you see how much distance that would be if it was just just uh, that part of my body so that's all happening before we ever hit that so I really encourage you to work on these components okay it's uh it's really important to have a good punch. That's what decides our fates nine times out of ten, you know, or 99 times out of 100 is, is just who has that good punch, you know, who has the, who has the good punch, who gets it off first, you know. So that's it, y'all. Thank you for coming by and hanging out with me. I appreciate y'all. Live free and punch hard, okay, and be good to yourselves because you're worth it, and I dig you. Thank y'all. I appreciate you coming by and hanging out. Punch hard.